Dear Jan, I'm very much looking forward to your presentation and the screen is now yours. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Nicholas, for the gracious introduction. And thanks, everyone, for coming. I, I realize I'm competing with the Stony Brook Game Theory workshop today. Um, so uh, I'm going to present a, a basically two field experiments on virtue teams uh, in a gig economy. So this is joint work with our fantastic doctoral students, Tang Ye, and my colleagues, uh, Chiao Zhu Mei Jiepi, and our former student, Wei Ai. Um, so let me motivate uh, the gig economy and its problems. So workers in traditional sectors, and by that, by traditional sectors, I, I would include acad academia. Um, derive at least part of our identity from work and we have at least before the pandemic opportunities to bond with our co-workers and there's a very clearly defined career trajectory. Uh, in comparison, gig workers have a totally different set of choices and, and uh, constraints. So earlier research very much, you know, uh, talked about the autonomy and flexibility of gig workers. Um, but more recent work, especially from sociology, identified the lack of work identity and bonds as a major problem. So a tasker from uh, TaskRabbit, for instance, uh, who used to be a high school teacher and decided, you know, to quit his day job and, uh, and become a gig worker full time said that you know, those who rely on gig economy to make a living would say that these are jobs that, that don't lead to anything. So every, every day you know, he, he wakes up, you know, the algorithm assigns some jobs to him and you know, every day is the same. And uh, there's a, a fairly recent book by sociologist Ravenel that, you know, where she interviewed 80 gig workers from four different platforms. And, you know, that reveals that attrition and lack of engagement is a fairly prominent problem on gig platforms. So this work is trying to address that um, by using, you know, market design theory. So uh, we will be conducting our, we conducted our experiments on DD, which is the largest ride sharing platform in the world. Uh, these are statistics pre-pandemic. Um, so DD drivers are primarily migrant workers and the unemployed and underemployed. So these are our main uh, subject pool, if you will. There's a third class who are commuters, you know, who um, offers a ride on the way to work and, you know, pick someone up on the way home. So these are uh, people who we, who are, you know, not in our subject pool and we're, we're not that worried about them. Um, so this problem is also prevalent on DD. So a DD driver interviewed by the Curiosity Daily said, I have no interaction or relationship with other colleagues. So you basically just drive, do your work and drive. So just to uh, compare the volume or the size of DD with two platforms that we fairly, we're fairly familiar with, Uber and Lyft. Um, so DD is, um, you know, larger in terms of the uh, number of rides served than Uber and Lyft combined. So we propose essentially an identity-based solution. The idea is to create driver team identity or organization identity, if you will, and increase driver engagement and productivity. So that, that was our objective. Um, the paper itself does not have a theory component, but it, 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 the design draw from social identity theory, um, identity economics, there's a huge literature, and also from contest theory, especially um, uh, status contests that, you know, um, we, in the design, lots of the design details also draw from what we know about identity and teams from the lab and the field. Um, there are several recent surveys that I'm going to just quickly mention uh, here on different aspects of uh, identity and teams, including uh, Shubo's recent survey. 
Um, there is also a research uh, sort of increasing volume of research on, on the right sharing economy, not surprisingly, because John Liss was the chief economist at Uber and now he's the chief economist at Lyft. So the, the research that we have seen so far came that comes out of um, Uber and Lyft primarily look at, you know, labor market outcomes, consumer surplus, and, and so on. So, so there's one paper that looks at DD, uh, using DD data by Liu et al, um, that looks at dynamic match efficiency, matching efficiency. So the difference between our paper and the, the previous ones are, we, really, we, we were looking at organizations. So we put organization and social relationships into the gig economy and evaluate the efficacy of that. So I'm going to focus primarily on the second experiment, but to um, just to, as, a, as a background, I'm going to um, first introduce the first experiment, the first field experiment that we run. So, so this is our first attempt to put teams into the ride sharing platform. Um, the reason for mentioning this was because um, this experiment actually put a lot of constraints on the second experiment. So, uh, when we propose to DD um, to run, you know, team contests, they give us a city. So we got the city of Dongguan, which is in southern China in 2017, and we had access to 2,100 drivers. Um, we formed teams of seven, um, and the contest lasts for a week, and they competed for cash prizes. Um, so, so these are the, the, the interesting part about this, this experiment is because um, in lots of the organization literature on teams, the teams are not exogenous. They're not, um, they're, they're, they are already either already existing teams or teams uh, formed on, you know, so, so, so it's very difficult to actually um, tease out the uh, uh, causality on uh, what kind of teams work, work better. So because this is the field ex first team experiment on DD, we were able to, um, you know, basically decide how to form teams. So we used um, five different algorithms, uh, two based on, three algorithms are based on homophily. Um, so hometown similarity and age similarity. Basically, this is geographic homophily and age homophily um, and productivity similarity, which is based on the number of trips to two weeks prior to uh, our experiment. And then there are two diversity algorithms. One is productivity diversity. So we rank everybody based on their productivity um, put them into seven buckets. So each team is formed by randomly draw one person from each bucket um, and then a completely randomly formed teams. So, so drivers are randomized into one of these algorithms and then we form teams and then randomly assign teams to contests. The contest was designed based on Fu et al's uh, 2015 paper, um, you know, team contest with pairwise battles. So um, I'm, I'm not going to go into the details. I, I want to mention basically the influence and the constraints of this experiment that's imposed on subsequent experiments. So we find that team contests increase driver revenue. The average treatment effect is large, is 12%. And um, they are primarily driven by responsive teams. So these are teams who, um, you know, we send a little quiz to the team captains at the beginning of the, the contest, asking them to contact team members to fill out a questionnaire. So the questionnaire contains, quest, you know, um, questions where, where, that you don't know off the top of your head. It's just like, for instance, the last three digits of your teammates um, uh, license plate number. And, and we have the ground truth. So, so we can check whether you actually talk to people or not. And it turns out that 60% of the team captains submitted the questionnaire and they, you know, uh, evidence that they actually talked to the team. And um, so for these responsive teams, the increase in productivity was 19%. And we look at whether that was because they drove faster, um, but it was completely driven by the hours. So that's equivalent to, you know, working 1.2 hours longer per day. 
Um, and we also check whether, you know, that decreased the quality of service. It turns out that, you know, the quality of service was the same as before. Uh, what's important is that we find team composition affect productivity. So the two algorithms that perform the best were hometown similarity and age similarity. So age similarity continued to perform better than random uh, after the contest was, was over. Um, so, so one unanswered question was, you know, whether the effect was driven by identity or the cash price. Um, so uh, we, we find some evidence. So this experiment per se cannot, does not enable us to answer that question, but we have some anecdotal evidence or not anecdotal, some uh, ev evidence that it's not completely driven by the cash prize because treated drivers continue to be more productive two weeks after the contest was over. So that's when the interface was back to normal um, and they just earned peace rate. We also surveyed them. The survey response rate was 25% and interviewed these, uh, these drivers. Um, it turns out that you know, people who responded really liked the contest. And one of the reasons they cited was that they were able to find friends, um, especially migrant workers who, who come from other provinces. And most of them come from the countryside. And they said, you know, especially you know, with hometown similarity, I was able to find friends from my hometown. Um, so, so these two algorithms turn out to be constraints. Uh, so DD liked the results, so they ship, shipped it to production. Um, in 2018 alone, DD ran 1,500 team contests across 180 cities in China involving 2 million drivers. Um, but um, so all the driver, the uh, team formation algorithm were now the two team formation algorithm that that um, was the best performing one from the first experiment. So uh, the, the, the type of contest that DD ran themselves were essentially one week long uh, for cash price and then teams were dismissed right after the contest. So they used these contests to meet the over demand coming from national holidays, for example, um, when there are lots of tourists uh, going to these uh, historical cities, um, the, uh, when they, anticipated high demand, they will pull out the team contest to meet that demand. Um, and they're also short term. Uh, so we, we pitched to them and said, you know, you're, you're not making full use of the idea of identity, so which, which be longer lasting. Uh, and that, you know, is the basis for our second experiment. So in the second experiment, which started in the fall of 2018, uh, we had essentially um, four stages. So first we recruit drivers and for, you know, uh, I'll talk a little more about this and, and form teams. The second one is, you know, for one week, everyone engage in the team contest for cash prize. So these are like the one week long contest that DD run um, themselves on the platform. The experiment really started once the short-term contest was over. So um, for a random subsample in the control, work was back to normal. They only see, they don't stop, the, their interface was back to normal. So they uh, only see their individual income after the, uh, at the end of each day. Um, so for a team leaderboard, individual leaderboard condition, they continue to see the individual rankings um, after the contest was, the, the, the short term was over, um, but without any cash bonus. The main treatment is called the team leaderboard. So they see the team ranking, they continue to see the team ranking and individual ranking within their team um, for three weeks. So this is what we call the status contest intervention. After the three weeks was over, we moved to another short term for cash contest. This was not pre-announced. So they, you know, they, they just pushed out an announcement and said, here, we have another contest. And then we conducted a survey. So this time we conducted the experiment in uh, three different cities in China. 
uh, Beijing, Taiyuan, and Kunming. So these are very different in terms of size and uh, demographic composition. Beijing is primarily, you know, metropolitan and um, immigrant, uh, immigrant city, immigrant within China. Um, Taiyuan is much more traditional and Kunming as well. Uh, what I want to draw is the order response rate before the, uh, um, the contest started. So in Beijing and Taiyuan, 90% of the orders were fulfilled. And in Kunming, 98% was fulfilled. So you will see um, the re this is also reflected in the result. The reason um, you have this 10% gap was because when Uber was in China, they, Uber and Didi engaged in Bertrand competition. So the price was really low. Once Uber pulled out, uh, Didi became a monopolist um, in 399 medium and large cities in China. And they, of course, started to implement, implement search pricing. And consumers were furious because they remember how low the prices were. So, um, so they got a lot of backlash on the uh, on the uh, on social media. So they pulled search. They, they realized they couldn't do search pricing. So they implemented a queuing mechanism. So during rush hours, they open the app, and you know you're like, all right. So I am number forty five in the queue, and the waiting time is an hour. By that time, you might just go somewhere else. Um, so so that that explains the queuing mechanism is essentially the reason for the gap. Um, in Beijing and Taiyuan. Um, so before I go into the experiment design, um, are, are there questions? So to now there are no questions in the chat. I think everything is very clear. Okay, good, thank you. So uh, what we did was, um, we had the DD imposes an activity rule, essentially an activity um, filter for who can participate in the contest. So these are these tend to be more active drivers. So we had 27,000 uh, drivers who participated in our experiment. So they're randomized into essentially 9,000 drivers per experimental condition. Um, and the team formation um, process essentially is uh, pre-programmed and we had no influence on that. Um, so drivers can volunteer to be team captains. Each captain can organize a team of seven. So this should all sound familiar from the first experiment. And so 36% of the teams were complete. So a, a captain can register like a complete team on the platform. And then if a, a captain can only come with, let's say, three people, uh, then the algorithm recommend members to the incomplete team. So that's 64% of our teams. So these are, you know, the algorithms are the two best performing algorithms from the first experiment, uh, hometown similarity or um, age similarity. So we're going to control for this in our regression analysis. Um, so the pre-intervention contest was um, conducted for a week and the algorithm was, you know, so there are five teams in each leaderboard, so which is the competing group. Um, the algorithm is best of five. So in terms of total revenue, we're totaling up your, to your revenue for this week and the highest performing teams in terms of revenue win the, 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 wins the cash prize. So the award amount is essentially normalized based on reward per city, you know, the per, the per hour rate by city. So in Beijing, it was 100 RMB uh, and 650 for Kunming and Taiyuan. Um, so the other part is that the total revenue of the top six drivers count in a seven driver team. And this is because uh, in cities like Beijing, for each license plate, um, there's one day a week that you cannot get on the road um, to control for air pollution. Uh, so, so the reason for running the pre-contest, uh, pre if you will, pre-intervention contest is to enhance team identity. So this is based on the lab experiment by Eckhart Grossman. 
Um, so this is what the mockup of an interface look like during the three week status contest. Um, so for the team leaderboard condition, you see your team's ranking, even though it doesn't have any monetary implications, you just see the ranking. And if you tap your team's logo, you get to see the individual drivers ranking in your team. If you're in the individual leaderboard condition, you see the driver, uh, the driver's revenue and their ranking. And at the end of each day, so at the end of each day, we'll push this out to your app. If you're in the control condition, you just see your own revenue. And I want to also quickly mention that I'm going to talk about revenue, but the um, revenue sharing model on DD is uh, driver gets 80%, excuse me, of, of uh, the, the, you know, if you make a trip, let's say to the airport, of the total revenue generated, the driver gets 80%, the platform gets 20%. So we can talk about profit or driver income, they essentially, they're equivalent. And so there are, um, to can recap, three experimental conditions in the intervention. So in the team leaderboard condition, you see the team ranking and individual ranking within a team, but this is secondary. This is only after you tap your team. Um, and for the individual leaderboard, you see individual ranking within your team. So this is very much like the Modovano et al. paper, theory paper. And in the control condition, you don't see any rankings. Then there was a post-intervention contest and a post-experiment survey, which we hope, or we, we designed it to hope to dig into the mechanisms. So we pre-registered our hypotheses. Uh, we pre-registered four hypotheses. The first one is about the average treatment effect in terms of revenue ranking. So we anticipate that treated drivers should generate more higher revenue than drivers in the control condition. So this is due to um, you know, the identity you derive from your team um, and potentially the, uh, the competition effect from, the, from the, uh, the, the ranking. And the team leaderboard should dominate individual leaderboard under certain conditions. Um, we also anticipate that the treatment effect persists in the post-intervention contest. And the re on the retention part, we, because of the bonds, identity and bonds you formed with your teammates, we anticipate that treated drivers are more likely to stay in DD than those in the control condition, both during and uh, after the contest. And the last one is really not a treatment effect, um, but it's interesting to see. We anticipate that more productive and experienced drivers are more likely to volunteer to be team captains. Okay, so let me uh, pause to see if there are any questions about the design or hypotheses. If not, I'm going to move to results. Okay. All right, so I'm first going to show a number of um, figures um, that you know, gives you a rough idea of the experimental results and then we're going into the regression analysis. So what you see here is the Taiyuan um, graph in different phases. So the gray bar is pre-experiment. Uh, the red bar is the week of the registration. The yellow bar is the pre-intervention contest and the blue, the, blue, um, the blue shade is the three week status contest. The pink one is the post contest. So what we see here is the red uh, the red line, which is the team leaderboard condition, seems to do better both during the intervention and after the intervention. Um, individual leaderboard doesn't seem to be that different from the control condition. So the blue one is the individual leaderboard and the dotted line is the control condition. And I want to just talk a little bit about the seasonal effect that you see on this graph and all subsequent graphs, which is... Um, this is the end of the fiscal year, so December 31st, when there are lots of incentives on the platform. So all the conditions would, would, would go up um, to meet whatever goals that the, uh, the platform set for themselves for that fiscal year. So this is the end of the year. 
And what you see the decline is what's leading up to the Chinese New Year when everybody is like the two weeks when nothing happens, everyone go home. Um, and you see that in all the other um, graphs as well. This is in Beijing and what you would notice in Beijing is that actually the effect is reversed. So individual leaderboard performs better than team leaderboard um, during, during the, the status contest. In Kunming, you know, it looks like the um, team leaderboard performs quite well, but it's nothing is statistically significant. So I'm going to just now go through each hypothesis. Um, so the first one is about the average treatment effect in terms of revenue ranking. So we use the difference in differences models where we look at, you know, for each week, um, how does that compare to the two weeks or one week pre-contest? Um, so the first specification is just about the treatment. The second one is an attempt to separate the effects of team leaderboard and individual leaderboard. And in all specifications, we control for city fix effects. So this is a test of um, the first hypothesis of, of the first part of the first hypothesis, which is um, that if you uh, pull all the treated drivers together and compare them to the control condition, you'll find that treated drivers during the three week status contest generate essentially 35 yuan um, more than the control drivers. And it's all driven, primarily driven by Beijing drivers because Beijing's the largest city among the three and it contributes most drivers. Um, and that effect persists when you uh, control for other covariates. So what we had was age, DDH, which is how long they work for the platform. And this is the hometown distance from the contest city, which says that um, essentially it's a measure of um, how homogeneous the, the, the team is. Um, so if a team has a larger, you know, people come from farther away, it's negatively correlated with revenue. And we also have a dummy to control for whether the team was self-formed or formed by the algorithms. We were very surprised that self-formed teams almost always has a negative effect compared to algorithm-formed teams. And then we look at the difference between team leaderboard and individual leaderboard. Um, and it turns out that the individual leaderboard um, did significantly better than the control condition. And if you compare the two, uh, I guess it's, okay, so it's the, the marginal difference between team and individual leaderboard is significant in Taiwan. Um, and in all of these specifications, so this square bracket is multiple hypotheses controlled um, Q value, which is the, the false discovery rate. Um, so let me just summarize everything in terms of percentage terms. Um, so the first result is on virtue teams and productivity. And what we find is that treated drivers generate uh, about, this effect is about 2% uh, higher revenue than those in the control condition. So this is um, when you pull everybody together. At the city level, the effect is, is larger. So for Taiyuan, team leaderboard leads to a 5.3 increase in driver revenue and Beijing is 2.3, individual leaderboard um, generates 2.3% increase compared to the control condition. In Kunming, neither treatment has a significant effect. And so I'm just stop going, I'm going to stop repeating myself going forward. Nothing is ever significant in Kunming. Um, so is this a large or a small effect? Um, so remember that the intervention that we implemented is an information intervention. So the only thing that there's no monetary incentive. So the only thing we implemented was the ranking, um, you know, feedback and ranking. So there's a, a recent working paper by Stefano, Stefano Della Vigna um, that looks at, you know, information interventions, nudges um, from the government nudge units and academic papers. 
Um, so the effect size is very similar to the meta-analysis generated from the uh, from the um, Delavigne et al. paper. Okay. Um, the second result is looking at treatment persistence, which is, you know, after the three-week contest is over, everybody participates in this, you know, best of five team contest for cash prize. And yes, so after the treatment was over, the only thing that matters afterwards is actually the team leaderboard, and the effect size is also larger. Um, so in the second result, uh, we see that during the one week post-intervention contest, treated drivers, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, in the, under the team leaderboard condition, um, generates about 2.5% more weekly revenue con compared to the control. And so we, continue to have data about three for three months after the contest. So this is what happens after the contest. The decline, as I mentioned, um, this was due to the Chinese New Year when the migrant drivers would go home. And the last week of access was actually the week after, uh, the first, first week of March, which is the week after um, Chinese New Year. And we look at the one week after um, team leaderboard generates, if the way to interpret the coefficient is that's a 0.1 day effect. So I wanted to also talk a little bit about how you measure retention or attrition um, for online platforms. So in the brick and mortar world, if someone leaves their job, uh, it's a binary scenario, right? So they, you know, hand in their keys, pack their office, and they leave. Um, but our colleagues in DD told us that no one actually, the drivers don't delete their app. They just stop working for the platform. So we thought about measurements. And so we decided to use, um, if they offered at least one trip during a day, then we count that day as active. So it's, it's actually a continuous measure. And so this effect is, you know, they work, if they were treated under the team leaderboard for three weeks, you know, three months after the intervention was over, they work on average 0.1 day or an hour longer on the platform. And the effect is, is larger for Taiyuan. So that's 0.4 days, half a day longer um, for uh, Taiyuan drivers. And um, in each case, it's, uh, it's um, uh, you know, the team leaderboard actually dominates the individual leaderboard. Um, so for three months after the experiment, the effect size is actually remarkably stable. So it's about a 0 0.1, 0 0.1 day effect for the team leaderboard. And in Taiwan, it's about a 0.3 day effect, a third of a day. So this is the week after the Chinese New Year. And again, it's um, uh, in both cases, the effects are significant. So we, we did different types of estimates and it turns out the effects are, are significant uh, and, and the, the effects are quite stable. The effect size are quite stable no matter where you cut it. So for up to three months after the experiment, drivers in the team leaderboard treatment work an average of an, an hour longer per week than those in the control condition. And for Taiwan drivers, it's the equivalence of three hours longer per week. Um, and then the last pre-registered hypothesis is to look at, you know, leader, leadership, you know, who wants to be a team captain. I, I first want to say that, you know, people often ask, you know, are there any gender effects? It turns out that on DD, at least in our sample, 98% of the drivers are male. So, so uh, we just don't have any um, enough observations to talk about gender effects. So it turns out that, yes. Yeah, so if we look at your pre-experiment revenue, and whether you served as a captain before and your DDH, 
it confirms that, you know, more productive drivers, those who served as a captain in one of the contests before, and more experienced drivers are more likely to volunteer to be a team captain. Um, so we did a whole bunch of robustness checks in the appendix because captains are more productive. We reanalyzed everything, excluding the captain. It turns out that all the results hold. The second type of analysis, which I thought was interesting, but we, we didn't anticipate it. So we didn't um, pre-register this hypothesis, is to look at whether the uh, treatment effects primarily come from those who are above median, but more productive, right? Those who are above median before the contest versus those who are below the median. And it turns out that everything was driven by the below median drivers. Um, so this is actually consistent with a lot of social comparison experiments. Uh, when you send out um, social information social, and, and ranking, um, most of the gains come from those who are you know, lagging behind before, before the intervention. Um, so we um, try to analyze the, uh, the, you know, what was driving the effects from the post-experiment survey. Unfortunately, only 15% of the drivers responded. So given, you know, um, and, and it's not a random sample. And the reason we knew was because, you know, captains were eight percentage points more likely to respond if you won the team contest in the first short term, you're more likely to respond. If you won it in the, uh, if your team won the contest in the last short term, uh, you're 10 percentage points more likely to respond and so on. So, but we had, you know, 4,000 responses. So we, we look at what they say of those who responded. 92% of them said that they liked the contest and the top reasons for liking them was you know, team belonging, making friends and a sense of honor from winning. Um, we also asked them how they communicated. 80% um, of them communicated on WeChat uh, across, uh, across teams and 92% of them said that they uh, also communicated on the phone. Uh, it's important that, you know, 25% of them said that they had face-to-face -face meetings. Uh, and this is consistent with our interviews with the DD drivers after our very first experiment um, that they said after they, the contest, the one-week contest was over, they continued to meet and have dinner and uh, meet their teammates. So it seemed that they were, at least some of them, were building up a social relationship which was our intention. So I have five more minutes. So let me sum up um, the results. So what we have shown is that team contest increases driver productivity, but if you take out, take out the monetary incentives and just look at status contests, um, we find that team leaderboard had a significant effect in Taiwan and uh, individual leaderboard is significant in Beijing and overall. So, so one question is, why are they so different? The effects are so different between Beijing uh, and Taiwan. Um, so we look at the demographics. So we have everybody's ID number, national ID number, which, which contains the code for their birthplace, so which is their hometown. Um, so for Taiwan drivers, the average distance between their birthplace and uh, the city, you know, the city center is 100 kilometers, which means that most people are local. Um, whereas it's in Beijing is 350 kilometers, which means that, you know, consistent with the demographic composition that most people in Beijing, most drivers in Beijing are from outside of Beijing. So, so Taiwan is, in a way, the, the, the teams are more, more coherent uh, from, from the geographic similarity perspective, whereas in Beijing, um, they're more different in, in geographic location. The, the other result that we find is retention, uh, which have, look at you know, what happens after three months, three months up, up to three months after the experiment. And we find that team leaderboard has a significant overall effect. And also, especially the effect is large in Taiwan, whereas individual leaderboard stop having an effect after 
um, the experiment. Um, the last part is primarily from our survey data and the response rate was not great, but we have some indicative evidence that they feel you know, connected with other drivers and they were learning from the more experienced drivers. So one thing that um, the response says was, um, was that they learn how to take orders, what type of orders to accept, what to reject and where to drive. Um, and, and so this is consistent with some of the results. For instance, uh, uh, from Bergman Morris on you know, information design for teams. Um, so you're, you're more likely to, uh, to get uh, um, responses, you know, uh, uh, information sharing within teams and, and finding friends. So I think this is my last slide. Okay, so I, I am uh, on time. So, so let me just mention a little bit about what we're doing currently. So we are hoping to get more into the mechanisms. And so we are basically taking all the best of five contests, you know, from DD, which enables us to you know, more than double the sample size and, and use machine learning models to, to try to probe the uh, mechanisms driving the effect. Yeah, Nora, see your, your hand is raised. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you so much. Um, uh, that's quite uh, amazing um, that, that this has so much impact. And uh, as you said, it mattered also how people became a leader. So I wanted to ask you to tell us a bit more about that. So do we also see differences in the long term effects depending on how people uh, became leaders? I see. Um, so um, so the, we, we always, so the platform will ask people to volunteer. Um, and there is almost no financial benefit from being a leader, which is you get the equivalence of a dollar <laughs> if you volunteer. So our first experiment actually involves some randomization, so which is, um, it turns out in the first field experiment, we say, you know, whoever wants to volunteer, and we had more than 500 volunteers for 250 positions. And so it turns out that, you know, if a team has more than one volunteer, we randomly chose one to be the leader. And the effect is marginal in the sense that, um, you know, leaders, yeah, during the contest, leaders are more productive. And, uh, but it's only compared to the one who are randomized out. Um, and, and so that, that, that's sort of the, the only exogenous variation we had on leaders. And then going after the first experiment, uh, Didi decided to continue asking people to volunteer. And um, so the effect that we have is that leaders are more productive before and more experienced before, before the contest. So that's, that's the only, only thing we have. And so now it's actually, they wanted to, so Didi wanted to make it a, essentially a permanent feature. Um, so they now have a, a career trajectory. So leaders uh, are more permanent in the sense that they get to become, you know, advisors to the local DD office and they can you know essentially gather information and reflect drivers concerns and complaints and uh, and become essentially more of part of the organization yeah cool thank you thank you So um, should uh, let me stop sharing so uh, Shibu can either um, share his sure. yeah I, okay. I can share in the meantime I think there is one more question if you can want to answer that one yeah okay exactly Jack do you want to unmute yourself and, and ask the question hello hi thank you for the talk it was really really interesting 
Uh, I was wondering whether you have any information on how uh, team workers perceive their team leaders. Do they generally have a positive impression of them? Um, do you have any, any information on this? Um, whether how, I'm sorry, I, 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 I didn't, can you repeat your question? I didn't catch the second half. Uh, whether they had a positive impression of their team leader, uh, whether they thought yeah. they were exerting uh, excessive pressure on them, saying that, like, uh, yeah, so that they would work harder. Do you have any information on that? Yeah, so that information we have, um, we have from the survey. Um, so there is a small minority of people who said, you know, we wish the leaders would provide more leadership. But most of the people say that the uh, you know, the leaders were, uh, you know, doing what they're supposed to do, um, cheering the team along. And um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, so we don't, we don't have, a, you know, we don't have, We don't have sort of exogenously varied information about the leader, except the, the evidence that I mentioned in the first experiment that, you know, um, that compared to those who are randomized out of their leadership among the volunteers, right? The, the leaders were more productive, marginally more productive um, during the contest. Um, but they, they do seem to have a fair amount of information sharing. Um, during the during the contents, I don't know. I'm not sure whether that answers your question. Yeah, no, that was helpful. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so um, shall I start, Nicholas? Yes, please. Okay, sure. Okay, thanks. I don't have much to say really after such a good presentation and. <laughs> And everything was clear, I think, uh, to everybody. So I'm just going to um, just uh, recap what we have just learned. It's a novel field experiment uh, with Chinese rideshare company, DD. Um, it's creating virtual teams uh, without monetary incentive. That's the like biggest part in gig market and trying to find out what kind of information feedback it's going to be more productive uh, with some specific questions. Now it's a huge experiment with around 28,000 drivers and they are giving three different uh, information feedback, either own performance, that is the control, then their team ranking plus within team individual ranking, this is the second one. And the third one is only within team individual ranking. Now the main results are treated teams earn more revenue. Once they work hard, they earn more revenue, it's good for them, good for DD. And subjects who are given team feedback, they work longer, even after the contest is done. And subjects who are given team feedback, they stay longer with the firm as well. So retention is higher. And then the follow-up survey showed that it's usually happening due to team learning, team identity, and so on. So this is like to my two minute summary of <laughs> such a big paper. And the discussion is, of course, this is a very nice and efficient field experiment. And results are, um, are very straightforward to understand. Uh, overall raises further question in this area of literature and mostly it's uh, communication matters and spillover productivity, those matter. Even if an identical uh, identity related um, market design. Uh, I have a few major comments. First one, and I think I mentioned this one to you yet before. Uh, for somebody, my test, it would be nice to have a toy model um, for uh, this one. Uh, so, this is, a, this is a group contest with additive impact function means the productivity of or revenue of each of the group member, this gets added together. And then it goes to a contest success function that determines which team is going to win. But a peculiar thing about this particular um, uh, contest is in the end, when the group wins the prize, who is going to uh, get, uh, get the prize? What is the share? I'm talking about pre-contest, uh, sorry, pre-intervention contest, okay? In the pre-intervention contest, it was the case that my share of revenue will determine my share of price. So this is a very specific type of within and between uh, uh, team contest that goes simultaneously. Now, if we assume that whatever they learned in the pre-intervention uh, contest 
that has spillover effect when they are in intervention context, it might be that even if there is status, the subjects are treating the status as if the share of my status would be share of my revenue that I earn for the team. And in that case, uh, of course, I have a paper with uh, JP Choi. Uh, uh, this does exactly this, it, it does much more. It has CS uh, impact function, but we have a specific uh, case when it's additive. And you know, um, in that case, and there will be a very nice diagram there, always for two, two, uh, two groups to put it in two dimension. And we know that in each team, there is power asymmetry in the sense of some players are better than some other players, mostly the captains are better. And what we show that if we have this kind of asymmetry, that is actually better to earn revenue. So the effort, effort is in terms of this asymmetry, inverted U-shaped. So if everything, everybody was of the same capability, we will not earn much revenue. So because there is heterogeneity in the uh, in between team, having this kind of within between contest together actually increases revenue. So you don't have to use this one, but this as well as a couple of papers there by Johannes Munster and Hausken, they also do, do similar thing, not exactly what you're doing. That might be useful. And Another thing that is uh, that can be included in the theory that the issue of information feedback, uh, for example, the nice paper by Eder. Now you don't have to have this issue of information feedback in the model because you can always uh, treat this information feedback as different way of uh, making identity salient instead of information itself uh, coming into the strategy. But even with no model, the relevant hypotheses that are already put, like um, pre-registered hypothesis, those are very useful in the uh, paper when I was reading it. Second, uh, and these are some of the questions. So is there a difference in performance in the pre-intervention and post-intervention incentivized contests? So whether there is a difference. And if there is a difference, it might be that the learning goes a long way. Now, and this is another one which uh, probably need a bit more uh, discussion in the paper. So the time of intervention and non instrument contest, it seems that individual leaderboard is more effective, but post-intervention incentive contest, it's not exactly opposite, but results differ. So um, we can see the result, but giving some intuition and possible reasons for that might be useful. Now, the other one is, would this non-incentivized status seeking contest that this paper focuses on, would it still be effective if we did not have incentivized contest uh, before? And this is why, I think this is important. This is why having this STOI model would be useful. That, okay, we, they had this, you know, very structured incentive contest in which we see that this is supposed to happen. Now, if we have behavioral spillover, like not sharing, then we should also have a competitive behavioral spillover, which comes to non-incentivized one, and the theory will work and support your uh, result. And then a few minor uh, comments. So we know that, well, you know this paper because you handled it as relative. So, uh, we had real, uh, uh, re real identity matters to increase effort in a group contest. But induced identity does not matter because it does not increase effort, right? So in, in our paper, we did white versus East Asian conflict. And when we told them that you are white, you are, you are East Asian, the effort went up quite a lot. But again, same white versus East Asian, we told them you're blue and you're green, they did not fight as much. Now the question is here, current study shows that the, in the field, induced identity can be effective. It might be because of information feedback or knowledge spillover, or it might be that, no, they did not take it as induced identity. You mentioned that age and immigration patterns, those were similar. So probably they took it very seriously. And that's why it mattered. I'm not very sure exactly what happened, but I think it's, in, it's interesting and important in this area of literature. And another one is the results for that FX of team performance, which um, uh, Nora and, um, other people are also asking that 
this self selection of captain and good players who stays and so on your this result can be matched with this jp paper by hamilton and others um i'm sure you know this one but you didn't mention it so it that might be useful to mention that your paper is not just aberration from others uh, this actually uh, uh matches with the team incentive literature and with this paper another one is uh, again um we can see that people are earning more but does that actually mean that they are being well off uh do we, does high revenue mean high utility do we know what is happening to the losers are they being depressed so it might be good to um tone down that part a bit in the paper including the abstract the abstract says big that oh, we uh, look at the well being you don't really look at the well being you look at the revenue and uh, some of the service um and there are some things you can still do but not necessary until unless probably refer is asked some survival analysis um reference rate format is a bit uh you know you use different kind of format uh under the same uh, reference list different paper has different format so probably you want to look at that and summary table of the results might be good you have the hypothesis pre register hypothesis in the end if you have at least in the discussion section if you have a summary table that for this we see this side by side that might be really nice and uh this is not really major or minor comment it's just a comment of caution about how reliable the post experimental survey would be with 15% uh replying and most of them probably are successful that's why they are replying um so that might be a comment and caution i'll leave this one for people to read the cartoon but yeah Perfect. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that was really thorough. Thank you, Shiva. Um, so yeah, I think that everything that you mentioned uh, are really important to look at, and um, and we will, you know, go through them. It's actually right now we're revising the paper, so this is a good time to to get such uh, valuable comments. Um, and so the, the question is, you know, what about losers? Uh, so there, there's some indicative evidence that uh, losers are less likely to fill out our surveys. <laughs> so indicating that maybe they're not, they're not that happy, but financially they're not worse off in the sense that, um, you know, in the lab experiments on contests, usually um, if you lose, you know, your effort is sunk cost and then that's it. Notice that these drivers continue to earn piece rate. So they, throughout the entire contest, the bonus is extra. Ranking, higher ranking is extra. And um, at least from the financial perspectives, you, you actually don't lose. Uh, but, uh, but the question is, you know, what about the emotional well-being? So the, our well-being measures are yeah. based on, as you mentioned, <laughs> uh, a very low response rate, you know, 15% survey and our previous intervention. So, so what we're trying to do right now, uh, based on a, a referee's suggestion, is actually to pull this whole sequence of contests from that was run in 2018, uh, including the ones, you know, adding the ones run by the platform. That will give us, um, you know, hopefully, and we're, we're going to use the machine learning tools to extract a lot more features to figure out what was actually driving the results. Um, so that's, that's where we are right now. And we definitely could, should look at losers and see whether we can specifically look at whether losers are less likely, you know, basically the retention result can be partitioned into winners and losers, but thank you. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll follow up with an email to ask for this. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. I'll stop sharing some if people want to ask for their questions. Perfect, thank you very much. I think there are no for the question at the moment. So, um, dear, dear, dear Jan, dear, dear Subo, thanks a lot. I think that was a, a great season finale uh, for, for this uh, seminar. We were now going to have a summer break. And uh, yeah, thanks, thanks a lot for, for the presentation and the discussion. Um, 
let me mention that we will be back after the summer break on uh, September 13th with uh, Michael Ostrovsky from uh, Stanford. And uh, until then, I, I wish you all the best. Uh, stay healthy. And I hope to see you all again after the summer uh, here in the seminar. Thank you so much you. for the thank presentation you. and discussion. Yeah, thanks for inviting me and for organizing such a wonderful seminar series.